There are fears that the troubles of Greece, Spain and Ireland will spread throughout Europe. For a closer look at how that could happen, we are joined once again by John Authors, the investment editor of the Financial Times. Good to have you back. Good to be, good to be here. All right, so how might the economic troubles in Greece and other European countries uh, create this kind of domino effect? Well, it'll come through markets and the flows of international capital. We've had a, a couple of templates for the, what might occur in the last 10 years or so. First of all, there was the Asian financial crisis at the end of the 1990s, where one currency after another and the Pacific Rim came under an attack. And then the other model would be from a few years ago during the financial crisis here in, here in the US. One bank after another comes under attack uh, speculatively uh, and regulators and governments have the, uh, have the dilemma of do you bail out or don't you bail out, given that if you do bail out that makes it all the easier to start betting against another one of the banks in the system. That's, that's the model that people are worried about that, that, that we could find happening in Europe. Sure. All right. Well, when the conversion to the euro was taking mm. place, there were those who argued against it mm. um, for a number of reasons. But mm. I'm wondering, does what we're seeing playing out in Europe back them up? Yes, plainly it does. I mean, that doesn't alter the fact that there, there remain quite a number of good reasons for the euro. But the, the big arguments made against it at the time uh, were that if you joined the euro, then you, you lost your, the ability to have your own monetary policy to set your own interest rates. And you also lost the ability to devalue your way out of a problem. Those, those are both things that the, that the UK, which didn't join the euro, have done to help them get through the crisis. And there was also the fear that uh, a number of different countries that really had quite different economies didn't really need the same monetary policy, but that was what they were going to get. And plainly, that is what's happened, that uh, countries like Spain and Greece needed to tighten interest rates much earlier, but they didn't because uh, they were getting interest rates that were more appropriate for countries like Germany. Okay, so some countries are responding. They yeah. are cutting back. Do you think they're doing enough? Uh, evidently not yet, uh, because uh, the uh, rating agencies in the markets are still very worried about the, uh, the repayments. Uh, and plainly it's a, it's a big problem these are all democracies and as you've seen from the the reports that you were showing earlier uh, the kind of austerity measures that are going to be necessary are very unpopular it's difficult to deal with them here's the real question then mm. of course could what is happening in europe impact the united states and if so how well first of all the kind of danger to the european economy is going to be a problem for everybody else in the world the eurozone is an extremely big economy at the moment the kind of austerity measures we're talking about could plainly slow down the Europe as a, as, a, as, a, as a customer for exports, as a trading partner, very severely. Also, and I still think this is a very remote risk, but if you actually got to the level where individual countries left the euro, then that's what we've come to call a black swan event, something for which there's really no precedent, that presumably would have a lot of very difficult uh, market consequences to model and we all know after the last few years that could have very nasty economic consequences everywhere including here in the US. We certainly do. John Authors, thank you very much. Thank you.